The October 2018 update, version 1809, is the latest update for Windows 10. Set to start rolling out to all Windows 10 devices this fall, new features like the File Explorer Dark Mode and SMS integration in the new Your Phone app will become available to everyone. Countless little things have been added and refined all throughout the OS, however, some things stand out more than others. Today, we're going to be exploring the most remarkable changes, with me, Cody, on Microsoft. You'll be greeted by a new post setup screen when you get the update. This will let you know about the new features Microsoft thinks you need to set up right now. Uh, this isn't much of a departure from the usual, but it's interesting nonetheless. Apparently, Windows now uses machine learning to help determine the best times for an update to install. Driver updates and Windows update notifications should also be blocked when playing games in game mode. Ever since Windows Phone failed, all kinds of new app support from Microsoft has appeared on iOS and Android. Now, with the Your Phone app on Windows 10 and Your Phone Companion on Android, you can access your phone's photos and text messages right from your PC. Once you have the October 2018 update, open the Your Phone app on your PC. Here, instructions will guide you through connecting your phone number to your account. Then, you'll get a text message on your phone to download the Your Phone Companion app on the Google Play Store. At this time, only Android devices running Android 7.0 and above are supported, and due to restrictions in iOS, iPhone users will have to sit back for now. You can still connect your iOS device to your PC, you'll just be missing out some of these new features in the October 2018 update. Your phone has two sections, Photos and Messages. Photos lets you view or copy the most recent pictures taken on your phone. Texts can be sent through your phone from your PC in Messages. Keep in mind this feature is still in preview, so it might be a little bit quirky. Currently, you can only view and send text, but new functionality is coming soon. Some really exciting stuff, actually, so make sure to keep tuned in. Since its release, the option to choose between a dark and light theme has been a part of Windows 10. While having a dark desktop is a great option to have, it's still somewhat AMOLED-centered and doesn't usually extend very far beyond UWB apps. This frustrates a lot of people. In the October 2018 update, the File Explorer is finally acquiring support for Dark Theme. It looks exactly the way File Explorer in Windows 10 always has, only it's, well, dark. As a veteran Dark Theme user, I can only be grateful for this, however, I can't help but nitpick. The overall execution of Dark Theme across Windows is poor, uh, an opinion reinforced by the recent introduction of a Dark Theme in macOS Mojave. On its first move, Mojave appears to have magically gotten the concept pristinely materialized system-wide. Windows 10, on the other hand, has had a dark theme for three years, and exceptions are still the norm. This seems to be the case with just about every aspect of Windows 10's design. As I've said, however, this is just nitpicking. I can look through these small inconsistencies to the overall experience, which in concept is actually really good. Windows 10's design language manages to create an understandable, accessible, and elegant solution to the device type spectrum we see today. Despite this, though, even through the musty glass, it's harder to ignore the deeper issues. When things don't work as intended, the design language is just more difficult to realize. Just compare the timeline transition showed off in a motion study to what we have in the October 2018 update. Uh, the disjoint is just astounding. Timeline gamed practically nothing feature-wise, yet the experience managed to get even worse. Timeline is a part of Task View. Similar features are also standard on Mac OS and Chrome OS. It's a must-have on laptops, and essential on tablets. The unusually poor performance it exhibits in this update just makes tablet mode even more difficult to use than before. The touch keyboard is another essential aspect of tablet mode. Has it been overhauled in the October 2018 update? Yes. Is it still awful? Yes. Uh, Swift key integration means touch typing is now a breeze, but this is figuring you're even able to get the keyboard to open in the first place. It's not all bad, though. 
Many of the worst bugs plaguing tablet mode when Windows 10 was first launched no longer exist. Swift key integration only shows that tablet mode isn't suffering from complete neglect. Remember that Microsoft is selling Surface Pro without a type cover, so it would definitely be in their best interest to have an alternate input method that actually works. On a positive note, Windows 10 now aligns with Unicode 11, supporting an additional 157 new emoji. Have you ever wanted to check the battery level of your Bluetooth devices on Windows 10, only to realize that there isn't really any way of doing so? Well, the October 2018 update has you covered. In the Bluetooth section, the battery percentages of all your Bluetooth devices will be listed next to their name. You can quickly get to this section by right-clicking on the Bluetooth icon in Action Center to go to the Windows settings. It would still be nice, though, if these percentages could also be shown in the battery flyout in the taskbar, as devices like the Surface Book can already display multiple batteries here. Storage Sense has some new options in the Windows settings. If you're like me and use OneDrive files on demand to save hard disk space, you can configure Storage Sense to automatically make files in your OneDrive folder online only. This will be done after a certain period of these files not being used, and of course can always be downloaded right back onto your PC by double-clicking on them. The October 2018 update is also revitalizing many older features in Windows 10. A lot of people really lost it when they heard that Microsoft is updating the snipping tool to better support pen and touch, but I think they'd be pretty shocked to realize that this and many other features in Windows were originally designed with tablets specifically in mind. The first version of this app dates all the way back to Windows XP Tablet PC Edition, which was a thing by the way, and I've used them before. They're... interesting, I guess. Anyways, the snipping tool is being replaced by a new app called Snip and Sketch. The controls are extremely simple. You can create a new snip by clicking on the highlighted button in the corner. The screen will dim, and you'll be able to take a snip. You can also switch to rectangular, freeform, or full screen snips in the toolbar near the top of the screen. As soon as you've taken the snip, it'll appear in the Snip and Sketch window. Here, you can mark up your snip using the standard Windows Ink tools. Inking feels a lot more natural in this version, and the tools are far more customizable than before. The pencil, ruler, crop tool, open file button, and undo options are all features that didn't exist in the old app. The only, and honestly pretty major, feature that's still missing from this new app is the window snip option. There are several new ways to enter snipping mode too. Using the keyboard shortcut Windows key plus Shift plus S, you'll be taken into snipping mode automatically, and your snip will be copied to the clipboard. There is a shortcut in Action Center, or you can configure the clicker on your pen to activate snipping mode. For keyboard users, a toggle in the Windows settings will allow you to enter snip mode by hitting the print screen key, useful if you only want to copy a specific part of your screen or have multiple monitors. Of course, um, if you enter this mode with a key, you can also just click the full screen capture, and it'll act just like it always has. A notification will follow letting you know that you can edit the snip at any time by tapping on it. For now, the classic snipping tool appears to be sticking around, but it makes sure to let you know that it probably won't be for much longer. Huzzah! A completely new clipboarding experience is being introduced in Windows 10 too, but don't worry, the classic commands and context menus are completely unaffected by these changes. In addition to Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V, the new shortcut Windows key plus V will bring up a clipboard panel wherever you are typing. This new clipboard saves multiple items, in chronological order, allowing you to copy and paste sporadically to your heart's content. The items in the list can be clicked on or selected using your keyboard. Should you want to destroy all evidence of your blasphemy, however, the Clear All button is your saving grace. Additional ways in which you can customize a clipboard can be found in the Windows settings. Here, you can enable the contents of your clipboard to sync across all your devices, which may consist of the entire thing or just specific items. Here, you can also just disable the clipboard entirely because you hate Windows 10 and will never use the Windows settings. Also note that clipboard history currently only supports plain text, HTML, and images less than 4 megabytes. Of course, this limitation doesn't apply to the regular copy and pasting of the most previous item that you copied, so that's good. Windows Search can sometimes be a bit hit and miss. 
For me, it doesn't understand that snip and sketch and snip and sketch mean the same thing, all the while insisting on opening the snipping tool instead. This aside, there are actually some nice new things to be found here. Searching for apps, documents, or files now brings up an extended preview with helpful shortcuts and information regarding the result. If I search for PowerPoint, the preview pane will have shortcuts to recent PowerPoint presentations. Searching for a file or document will show you exactly where that file is located, which you can copy or open. Finding quick web results is also easier, as Cortana processes your text as you are typing, showing you an answer without needing to hit enter or wait for the result to load. I can just type what time is it in Korea and the answer will be right there. I can also do some simple math equations like 9 divided by 6, which will give me the answer. Remember when Windows had its own PDF reader? Those days are long gone. Uh, Windows 10 uses Microsoft Edge for PDF and ebook viewing, and does actually quite an outstanding job. PDF files have a new icon in the October 2018 update, ditching the Edge logo and blank page style for a more fitting red-banded document. When you open the PDF document, you'll find that the toolbar at the top has been redesigned. There is a new button called Add Notes, and you can also click this little pin icon to dock the toolbar to the top of the screen. Reading View is a feature that makes web pages more comfortable to read. Seemingly aimed at young learners, the October 2018 update comes with learning tools in Microsoft Edge. When you highlight a word, the definition will appear automatically. You can have the pronunciation of that word spoken, and also given our example sentences. Learning tools can help in various other ways. You can space the text out a bit, change its color, and even enable a line reader to focus on sets of one, three, or five lines at a time. Grammar tools can be downloaded from the Microsoft Store, further assisting in text comprehension by highlighting nouns, verbs, and adjectives in different colors. Larger words can be broken up into their syllables to help with pronunciation. A redesigned settings page is present in Microsoft Edge in this update. Settings are categorized much better than before, and even contains new options like media autoplay. If I go on over to the download section, you'll also see that if I right-click on a download icon, I can have an option to open where that file was downloaded directly, something that wasn't there before and was kind of a little bit annoying. So, good to see it there now. Popping on over here into Windows Mixed Reality, we'll find a new shortcut on the Start menu called Flashlight. This isn't the kind of flashlight you're thinking of, however. Clicking on it will activate a little portal in your mixed reality world, allowing you to see through to what you're looking at in real life. The flashlight can also be activated using a shortcut on the button controller. Um, it's a keyboard combo, something like Windows key plus grab. It'll show you a little tutorial when you use it, but I seem to have a little difficulty grasping the concept. The flashlight window opens right where your controllers are, so you can wave your hands around and see whatever you're looking at in the real world. Think of it like switching between first and third person view in a video game. It can help give you a sense of location, especially helpful in a context where tripping over something is a possible consequence of not doing so. There are many other new features in the October 2018 update. An updated game bar, Bing integration in Notepad, autofill suggestions in the registry editor, new wireless display projection controls, and so much more. Most of these things simply work towards making existing features in Windows work better, and that's a good thing. While tablet mode is still abysmal and things are still pretty damn inconsistent, in the end, the positive changes in this update outweigh the stagnation that exists. Stagnation you just worsen by avoiding it, but let's face it, you'll eventually get this update whether you want it or not. This has been me, Cody, on Microsoft. If this video was helpful, make sure to subscribe, follow us on Twitter, and check out onmicrosoft.com for more info. Thank you, goodbye.